All right, hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is your first time joining. My name is Shane and this is The Coding Zoo. In today's video, we are gonna cover how to create tables in the Postgres SQL database. If you're not familiar with that, stick around. We're gonna jump right in. All right, let's go ahead and get started. In my last video, I showed you how to install the Postgres SQL database server and I showed you how to create a database in that database server. If you are not familiar with how to do that and you want to learn that first, I'll put a link to the video up here. Feel free to jump over to that video and check it out and then come back over and we'll show you how to create tables in that database. So let's jump in. So we're working with Postgres SQL. Uh, keep in mind that the SQL that we're learning, whether you're creating tables or, or, or performing queries or inserts, leads, or updates on those tables, it's pretty much all the same in between different database systems. There are some nuances. So what we learned today doesn't necessarily just apply to Postgres. It can also apply to other databases like MySQL, et cetera. There's, there's some little small nuances, but for the most part, it's very much the same. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we're still at my command line here. I disconnected from the database. Let's just let's, let's connect back to the database. So PS SQL. And I'm going to do dash uppercase U. And default username is Postgres. It's going to ask me for a password. This will be the password I created when I created the database server. Am I connected? I am connected because I can now see the command prompt with Postgres SQL there. All right, so we're connected to the database server. Let's go ahead and connect to the database we created on the server. Uh, so backslash C for connect. And the name of my database that we created in the last video is my order system DB. Press enter. You're now connected to the database my order system DB as user Postgres. You'll notice the command prompt chains. All right, so we're now connected. Now, let's see what kind of tables we have on the database. You can do that by doing slash DT. Did not find any relations. So it's looking for relational tables. It's looking for tables. All right, so we don't have any tables created on database yet. Let's go ahead and create our first table. I'm gonna create a table. This is a my order system database. So I'm gonna create a table called orders. And orders is basically going to contain information around uh, the orders that a, search, that a person might place in, like, say, an e-commerce system or something. In order to create a table, we would utilize the SQL create table statement. The create table statement is comprised of certain keywords. The first two keywords are create table, and you specify a table name, and then you have an open parentheses, and then you start specifying column names. After each column name, you specify a data type for that column, and then you specify any constraints you want to put on that column, followed by a comma. So each column is separated by a comma. And then once you have all your columns defined, you would close your parentheses and then have a ending semicolon. So you have a create table, table name, open parentheses. You have your column name, your data type for the column, any constraints you want on the column, comma, other columns you want to add, and then close parentheses and then end with a semicolon. That's your create tables SQL statement. Uh, we're gonna start with just a few fields on the table. Let's go ahead and create that table. So I'm gonna do create, it doesn't have to be uppercase, create table orders. Now, so you have a create table command and you have the name of the table you wanna create. I'm gonna do open parentheses. I'm gonna put the first column name order underscore id usually you want to use underscores uh so if it's more than one word it'd be like order underscore id or if it was created by created underscore by so order underscore id is the name of my column now different databases have different data uh, data types that you can use to put on your columns it just so happens there is a sequence data type in postgres a sequence is usually a column that is a, is a number, and that number automatically incre increments as you insert stuff into the table. That's usually what a sequence uh, data type is. Uh, the sequence data type in Postgres is called serial. So I'm going to do serial. So that's a, basically a sequence data type. And I'm going to make this the primary key. So what is primary key? Primary key is basically means this column contains the key to records. This column 
will have data in it that won't be duplicated across the table. It's unique. It's unique to that record. It's the primary identifier for that record. So order ID is a unique identifier. It's the main way of searching this table. It's the primary lookup for this table, the primary key to this table. So primary key, comma. Now I'm going to add another column, created by. Now created by, I'm going to make a var char. So a var char is basically a characters, variable characters, var char. Uh, it's basically strings, right? I'm going to set a size of 50. And I'm going to say it cannot be null, not null. So I don't want my created by to be null. If a record is created in this database for an order, somebody creates an order, I want to know who created it. So it cannot be null. I'm going to add one more field for now. I'm going to add order underscore date. When would this when was this order placed? Right now for order date, I'm going to use the data type of timestamp. So timestamp, and again, I don't want it to be null. So, so timestamp not null. So you'll notice as I specify these columns, I specify different data types. Now we won't be able to cover all the different data types for the different for that you can use in Postgres. Uh, you can look those up uh, on Google. You can Google it or look at the Postgres uh, documentation. There's different data types you can use. There's, there's int and there's varchar, there's, there's serial, there's timestamp. There's, there's numerous different data types you can use. Uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of how to use them when you create your columns. All right, so these are the three columns we're going to go with for now. I'm going to go ahead and close that off with parentheses and semicolon. Don't forget your semicolon in Postgres. You have to have that semicolon or it will not work. I want to press enter. Now, if it works correctly, it should say create table. All right. So it says create table. So it actually created the table. So I'm going to do a, what is it? Backslash DT. Let's see if it can find the table. And there we go. It found my orders table. Now I want to describe that table. I want to see what it looks like. To make sure it was created correctly. So I'm going to do select, I want to do table underscore name, comma, column underscore name, comma, data underscore type. And I'm going to do uh, from information schema. This is kind of built in items in the database. Columns where table underscore name equals and then put the name the name of the table so orders and then close that off don't forget your semicolon let's see if this works there we go so that basically looked at the information the metadata surrounding the table we just created you can see the orders table has an order id integer it's really a sequence as an order date and it has a created by there you go we now have an order table and that's all there is to it. That's all it takes to create a table in your Postgres database. So that's it. I hope that makes sense. Again, if you have any questions, leave me a message below. In our upcoming videos, we're going to show you actually how to insert data into the tables. We're going to show you how to select data from the tables and how to update data on tables. So if you're interested in seeing that in the future, be sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below. Hit that bell icon for alerts. Make sure you do that. If you if this video was helpful for you, click that like button. It really helps the channel out a lot. We appreciate it. It'll get the word out so others can be helped by this too. So, hey, thanks for watching today. We'll see you again next time. Have a great week. Bye.